Hello, and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new to this type of work, please start with Episode 1. If you're an intermediate, you start with Episode 98. And if you're advanced, go and fast forward all the way to Episode 200. With me, as always, is... We're just going to mess that up, right, Chris? All right, so I'm Jules, your co-host, and with me, as always, to share her wisdom and her insight is the spirit... Doctor herself, Kelly Sparta. I am struggling today, Stair Kelly. I don't even know my name. <laughs> I tell, I'm like, who am I talking to? What planet is it? Something is in retrograde. Oh my God. Mercury is I've... in retrograde, and it will be for the next three days. We're, you know, we're we're recording this on the 28th of of December. Mercury goes direct, I think, on the first, if I remember correctly. So. Dude, I can't get my like that. I can't remember. I can't get yeah. my words out today. I'm calling Jill's Jones, and um, I go to do, you know, I'm doing all my calculations, and you know, I don't have to look at a, you know, the touch touch key to do my calculator. I don't know what numbers I'm typing, because <laughs> they're everywhere. And I'm like, yeah. what? My computer just hates me. Yeah. Has my share drive, and it's like, no, the drive really is there. Well, we've lost connection. No, you're not. You, it's there. Right. It's literally there. Nothing has changed. Just save the file to the share drive. Yeah. Negative ghost drive. Okay, fine. Share, save it to my desktop. No, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> it's I like that. I had to reformat their entire hard drive after four hours on the phone with tech support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> So, how is Panama? How was Christmas in Panama? And are the did they take a vac? Did they take a vacation for protest? Are they still going on or what? No, no, no. The protests ended a few weeks ago, um, <laughs> and life is pretty much back to normal. In fact, I hosted karaoke on Christmas night. And Sweet. So, yeah. So that did not suck. There were a ton of people there too because the Panamanians celebrate Christmas Eve, and so Christmas Day is just like a break, right? Um, and so, uh, in terms of Christmas, they had a Christmas fair here. And so they, they have this big Christmas tree that is not a real tree. They build it, um, and they put it up and it's, you know, it's got like, I don't know, I don't know what's underneath it. I think maybe lawn, you know, the, the fake lawn or something on the basin and then, uh, okay. the decorations on it. So, you know, so many decorations that you barely see the quote unquote tree part. The actual and, uh, structure. It, yeah, okay. It's massive. It's like twenty five feet high, is my guess. Oh wow. Um, and it's a, and it's it's beautiful. It's really nice. And then they have, you know, local vendors who come out and sell their wares and lots of plants, lots of gifty things, lots of baked goods, lots of, you know, whatever, right? And so, you know, it's just fun. And you just walk around and there's birds screeching in the trees because that's where they all gather at, at dusk and they just sit and chatter upon them, you know, amongst themselves for the evening. I actually posted a TikTok about it like a year ago. So you guys, if you want to hear it, you can go back through my TikToks and sometime around this time, maybe earlier last year, uh, I posted a video about it where it was like the birds were screeching. <laughs> and it's so loud. And, um, and so, you know, we had friends over for breakfast uh, Christmas morning, and uh, Jeff made biscuits and gravy. And Yum. He, well, even better. So there's this really interesting vegetable, root vegetable here. It's, it's a taro root. So it's the same thing they make poi out of, right? Um, but not sour because, you know, it's not fermented or anything. It's, 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 it's along the lines of what you would expect in, like, um, you know, it's like a really starchy sort of potato-y thing. It's not really potato-y, but, you know, you get the idea. And um, what Jeff has discovered is that if he shreds it, flavors it to taste like uh, sausage, puts it in the sous vide to cook all the way through, and then, it and then he cools it overnight in the fridge. It becomes this brick, and then he breaks it up into small pieces. And if you take that and you put it into eggs or you put it into... Um, uh, uh, in this case, gravy, it tastes mm -hmm. like sausage. And so one of oh, our friends nice. is vegetarian. And so we made, or he made the vegetarian version for her. 
and the regular version for everybody else. And of course, I ate half and half because I was like, I got to try that. Right. So, yeah. And it was it was different, but it was not like obvious that it wasn't sausage. So, yeah, it was really quite delightful. That's she was thrilled because neat. she's like, I've been craving biscuits and gravy for years and I haven't been able to have them because I don't eat meat. And so she was super excited. <laughs> So that, that was Christmas Day. Is, yes. Yeah. Christmas Day, we did that and then, you know, went out for, and I ran karaoke all night. So that was our Christmas. Fun. Yeah. And we, you know, we opened stockings. We didn't do gifts because we had bought ourselves a gift for, for Christmas. We had bought a, a Google Chromecast to go on our, our projector screen and, and, um, and a sound bar. That was our Christmas. Cause nice i'm an experienced person not a thing person so which is evidence from the fact that i have given away everything i've owned or sold everything i've owned uh, three times in my life so yeah not a thing person so not a thing speaking of which though i have put up a new thing in my background so yes yes yeah, for those behind me on on the picture so if you are not a subscriber on youtube come on over to youtube and you'll see it when when you uh log in uh, when you see this episode on the YouTube channel. And so that's part of my new background. That's been my, my gift to myself from the business is upgrading my, my background for my, my videos and stuff because I'm tired of looking at the fluttering scarf in the background. <laughs> you know, this is the thing. You, you live in this house that is not yours it, with furniture that is not yours and decorations that are not yours. Not yours. And after a year, I'm done. You know, <laughs> like I need something to be mine, right? We we took the p the pictures off the walls because they were terrible um, a, a while ago, and now you know we're like, okay, the bare walls are not doing it for me. <laughs> so yeah, I bought the decorations for Christmas, and we put those up, and and that was good. But now I'm like, mm, no, I, you know, we bought the plant. We, we had Ganesh. We moved him from the bedroom because I, I never really see him in there anyway, because it was on the, over the headboard. So like, when do you ever look over the headboard in your bedroom? Almost never. Right. And so, and then I brought the peacock in from the living room. So, cause it was in the way of the projector that we had just gotten set up and, and uh, getting knocked over. So I was like, yeah, let's just bring it on screen and let everybody else see it. So go. all the things, and just, right? just change it up, you know, yeah. new year, new decor, new year, new it, decor. It works. Let's just get to that. Yes. And Kelly just went bye-bye. So I'm just going to sit here for a minute until she comes right back. Apparently she, you know, this, they needed her to go do something. And as we said, it's in Mercury Retrograde, so Internet went. And then she's going to come back any minute now to talk about sound healing. Because if y'all waiting on me to tell you about it, it's just not going to work. And she's popping up. Any minute now. Okay, I can't see or hear her. Now she's coming in on something else. Well, I got kicked All right, out. possibly. Hey! 
I got kicked out. One of the things that I didn't mention is that, you know, we are actually having rain for the first time in, in a while um, because it's the dry season now. And so the Internet has failed a couple of times today. <laughs> you know, never more than two or three minutes, but here we go. Inevitably, it'll be during the half an hour I try and record the podcast. <laughs> every Of course. Time, of you know? course. Yeah. So what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that you were going to be talking about um, sound healing um, and not actually doing it. So that we can we can learn about that. So, so yes, that's what we're going to do. So if you've been on the <laughs> podcast and you've experienced sound healing uh, with me, uh, you know, we've done several of them on the podcast over the years. And so today we're going to talk about how to actually do it. Now, now, sound healing can happen in a variety of different ways. It doesn't have to just be um, with the voice the way that I do it. In fact, most people don't do vocal sound healing. Most people are doing it with singing bowls or gongs or um, the tuning forks or, you know, any any number of things. Sometimes people even do specific frequency hertz stuff, right? Um, and so let me talk about why it works, okay? So we are all vibrating at different levels. And we talked on the last podcast, I think, about um, energy signatures, right? Was that last <laughs> podcast? Or? Yeah, okay. I'm doing yeah, I think so. Now. <laughs> I'm doing lives on Facebook now, and so I'm com losing track of what I said where. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, because we were talking yeah. about um, using your intuition daily. Yes. And okay. you were talking about finding the guy at the yeah. festival. Yeah. So, um, and, and if you're going lives, yes, I'm doing lives on Wednesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern on Facebook and TikTok. So if you want to come on and see me live and ask me questions, you can do that there. Okay. But yeah, that's why I'm losing track of what I said when and to whom, because I don't know where it was. Ah, so, okay. So uh, we all have energy signatures and those energy signatures are the frequency at which we vibrate. And the frequency at which you vibrate is how you manifest, right? It's the, the, the frequency that you're holding has within it all of your belief structures, all of your assumptions, all of your intentions, all of your attitudes. It's all built into the, the ever-changing frequency of you. Well, not ever-changing for everybody. For me, it's ever-changing because I live with the energy of change. Yeah, you're a transformational changing. shaman. Yeah. Go things. figure. Um, but for those of us on a spiritual path, we have changing energy signatures because we're growing. When you grow, your energy signature changes. When you let go of a limiting belief, your energy signature changes. When you grab onto and invest in a limiting belief, your energy signature changes, right? So all of these things impact your energy and therefore your vibration. Your energy signature is just another way of saying your vibration, right? And the energy signature, I call it that because it's it's how you are identifiable on the astral, right? So uh, it, it, we, when we think about a vibration, we think of it as like one thing. And that's not actually accurate for an energy signature, okay? The energy signature is many, many, many different vibrations going in and creating a unique set of vibrations that are your signature. Okay. And so since we are vibrating, then as we uh, sit into the, the, the work of doing sound healing, what we're looking at is we are taking an outside vibration in the form of the sound, whether that be bowls or voice or tuning rods or recordings at certain hertz or whatever, and using that to impact the sound or the vibration in the person. Okay. Now, what I just said was we've got a lot of different vibrations going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So your sound coming from the outside is not going to impact every vibration within you because it's not going to be on mm, vibrational par, I guess would be a, a language on this is kind of difficult, but um, is it kind of kind, like, like, like you're tuning into different vibration frequencies? Well, so it, it's, 
if I'm doing it with my voice, yes. If somebody's picking the bowls, yes, right? But um, if you're just playing like a specific hertz of vibration, then it's not tuning in to you. You're tuning into it, right? So okay. it's, it's, it's again, if you go back to entrainment, it's that same sort of thing that happens in there, right? That it's it's drawing you into a different vibration if you're listening to a single thing, right? Okay. Now with my sound healings, I'm often, you know, people sometimes think it's more than one person on the recording. <laughs> they think it's like, because my voice will split into multiple tones. And, you know, so I am hitting more than one thing at a time. And I'm also working with my breath and with the energies and everything else. So um, I'm doing more than one thing at a time. And singing bowls can accomplish that with different bowls being hit and things like that. It's not quite as precise as using your voice where you can direct it a little bit more, but it, it does similar sorts of things. And the same thing with the tuning forks. If you do more than one, you can impact more than one level at a time, right? But thankfully, it doesn't like change everything to one vibration because we need to be multiple vibrations, right? We are multi multi-vibrational beings. And so if you took everything and turned it into a single vibration, you would destroy the uniqueness that is you, right? Because okay. your vibration is a reflection of the uniqueness that is you. It is an emanation, not a reflection, an emanation of the uniqueness that is you. It's it's like this is who I am and I just emanate that out into the world. It just it just comes off of me in waves like I don't know, like body odor, right? <laughs> It's just different, though, right? <laughs> the only I am my different. own special baked cookie. Yeah, there is no one else that has a yes. cookie like mine. I am my own cookie. That did not come out right, y'all. Sorry about that. that was awesome. It sounded much more logical in my head. Sorry, guys. So. <clears throat> It makes sense because it emanates that lovely smell when it's freshly baked. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's not go there in other ways. Yes. <laughs> I am my own recipe. Nobody yes, else is like it. Your own unique recipe. With yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're going to let go of this metaphor now. Anyway. All right. Moving on. <laughs> on. Here we go. So. <laughs> Well, yeah. So the the vibration that we hold is yes. is a a combination of all of these things that make us who we are, right? And so, in a sound healing, what we're doing is we're using the sound that's coming in from the outside to break up things, channels of energy, channels of vibration that are blocked. Okay. And that can be blocked because there's grief there, or because there's resistance there or because there's anger there or upset there or whatever, right? There's a lot of different reasons why the channels of energy, the vibrations may be blocked. And so I'm using vibration and energy interchangeably in this case because they kind of are, okay? Um, and not entirely, but they overlap enough in this space that it's fine, okay? <laughs> so, um, and so the, the, energy that comes in from the outside and the sound healing is what is going to impact those uh, stuck spaces and open them up. Sometimes it's a stuck emotion where you, you hit it and it opens up and suddenly the person's feeling all of this stuff. And then the sound, uh, you know, especially in the type of healing that I do, the sound can be used to help facilitate the release of that emotion because mm -hmm. sometimes the emotion's stuck because it's too overwhelming for the person. And so in that case, I can pull some of that sound, some of that energy that is being released of that emotion into, uh, into my beingness so that I can express it and ex extend it out and allow it to release through the sound because I'm in connection with the person's energy while I do that, right? And so, um, but you get... Okay, I got to say this because I can hear somebody thinking it. All right. Don't bring shit into your energy field if you don't know who you are. Okay? You should, you know, as a beginning, as a beginning, oh. healer, do not do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Don't try and bring other people's emotions into your being and then express it because I am doing it while 
keeping my own emotions separated from the process. But that's a very high end skill. Please don't try and do this on your own. Okay. I am just explaining that this is a very high end skill that I do, that I've done for years, that I developed the ability to do and not have to take any of that energy into me and, and hold it myself. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm running it, but I'm not bringing it into my identity, my beingness. You're not mixing your energy with the energy of said person and taking it on as your own. Yeah, I am mixing my energies, which you're not supposed to do, but I do it in a different way. So this is what I'm saying. Don't do this. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is an advanced level skill. Please don't try this at home. Okay. Uh, because it, if you do it badly, you will fuck yourself up hard. Okay. <laughs> Just don't. Okay. So don't blow so, yourself up, kids. Yeah. Mm, yeah. This isn't a blow yourself up. This is a melt yourself down. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, yeah. Let's not do that. Okay. So, let's not do that. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, so <laughs> interestingly, I I did a, a a Facebook live yesterday on uh, energetic burnout, and so we were talking about burning yourself out energetically on the the Facebook live. So uh, if you want to see that, go into the in, onto my profile, you'll see it. Anyway, um, the what you're doing is you are impacting the energy of the person who is receiving the work, and Here's the thing. When you do this work, much like with any other energy work, you do not want to push. You do not want to force. You do not want to, like, try and, you know, wrangle it into submission. You know, you, this is you're there to do the work that the person is open to doing. And they are the ones who determine the depth of the work based on what moves when you bring in energy to it. And so, you know, this is where the whole wounded healer thing comes into being. And we have I'm sure we've talked about this, but the wounded healer concept of, you know, if you have to do something very specifically to make somebody better, to make you feel like you're good at what you do, you're going to be a wounded healer because your value needs to be not determined by their outcome. If your value is determined mm -hmm. by their outcome, then you are putting yourself into their healing and therefore you're likely to do damage. This is where the archetype of the wounded healer comes from, is you can't get out of the way of the work. and You can't allow the work to be what it is, which is you saying, I know better than you. You're going to uh. do what I think is right doesn't matter if you're not ready for it. I think you're ready for it. Therefore you are right. It's that it's all of that. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to be very careful when we're working in genres like this, that we are not attaching our value to their outcome. Okay. For that reason. Okay. So I, I'm going to stop for a second. Cause I've just downloaded a freak ton of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask questions if you if you have any. Um, and if you guys have questions at home, by all means, please post them. Uh, you can put them in as comments on the YouTube channel. You can uh, some of the platforms allow you to ask questions. You can always email me at Kelly at Kelly .com to ask a question. I am happy to answer them. And I often uh, I'm spending, uh, you know, every time somebody emails me, I email back. So mm -hmm. if you have emailed me for any reason, not received a response, it's because I did not get it. Please send it again. Okay. I always, always respond. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thunder. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we got thunder rolling through. So, uh, any questions on anything that I've said so far? <clears throat> well, it sounds like what you were saying was one, I need to be, uh, mindful of my own energy, my own issues. Kind of, it's kind of like whenever um, I know it's not this, it's not the same as the sound healing. It's different, but I can relate it to Reiki. Mm -hmm. As in, when I'm providing Reiki, it's just that Reiki is flowing through me. I am the instrument of that. Yes. So, in a similar way, if I'm doing a sound healing using bowls, the um, 
with the fork things, the tuning fork things, fork. tuning fork? forks, what the, <laughs> the, fork? the forks, what the fork, <laughs> you know, or, or my voice, then it, that is an instrument yes. to then do the healing. So yeah. my will is not going to go into that because then I'm going to taint the, the healing, you know, and mess, mess that up. So same thing in Reiki, I'm not putting... I'm not using my energy to do that, and I'm not putting my spin on it, Yeah. thinking I know better than said Reiki energy, right? Right. So, because um, that would be all ego, and that's just totally opposite of what, you know, we're, we we want to do as healers. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, now, if I was interested in, say, I wanted to learn uh, learn how to do sound healing, mm-hmm. you know, where where would I start? Well, it depends on what type of sound healing you want to learn, right? So if you're going to work with other instruments other than your voice, then you would start with acquiring said instruments, right? Um, And then becoming, uh, you know, coming into relationship with those instruments. And, you know, with your voice, you just need to come into relationship with your voice first, right? And understand how all the different ways that you can use it, right? Uh, so, you know, as a theater kid, I spent a lot of time going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? and learning all the different ways that my, my voice works and in how I hold it and, you know, how I hold the back of my soft palate and how I, how much I open my mouth and how, whether I send a sound through my nose or not and all the things. Right. And so you know, becoming familiar with your instrument that you're going to use for the sound, right? That's the very first thing, because until you are in such good relationship with your instrument, you're not going to be able to get out of your head to get out of the way of the healing, because you're going to be going, oh, no, which one makes which sound? And how do I do this? And what do I do? And, you know, so you really just need to mess with it until it comes a second nature you really yeah. just need to to do it until it comes second nature once that is true especially like with sound bowls where you have to learn how to hit them just the right size and then just the... them and, you know to resonate yep. them and on what you know how to stop them from resonating and all the different pieces and which setup is going to be best to, that doesn't kill your back while you're sitting there and doing it and mm-hmm. you know, how can you reach everything without touching a bowl with your knee or your butt or whatever right you know mm-hmm. all of these things are the practical aspects of learning how to do this work that nobody thinks about, but are the crucial foundational pieces to being able to actually do it without, uh, you know, being all up in your head and getting in the way, right? So a lot of it's just grinding through the practice and and just doing that. Um, and it doesn't have to be grinding. I mean, you can make it part of your own meditative practice to do it. I do sound healing on myself periodically just because why not, right? <laughs> so Yeah, um, yeah. And so, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, from there, then it's about being able to tune into the other person uh, or people. If you're doing, oftentimes the singing bowls are a group environment sort of thing where they, they will have people come in for a sound bath, right? So you're you oh, bathing okay. sound. And so uh, if you're working with a group, then you need to be able to read the energy of the group to create your sound experience or, you know, some people don't do it as a, um, they don't do it as a, as a, a feedback loop sort of thing for their work. Uh, some sound healers who work with bowls have a set system that they've set up that they have mm-hmm. channeled through or gotten from somebody else that says this does this and they invite people in and they just decide which one they're doing and that's what they do. So it just depends okay. on the person as to how you're doing it. Again, <clears throat> that sort of thing is more like listening to the frequency, you know, a frequency on, you know, that's pre-recorded and being impacted by it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not mm-hmm. a feedback loop, right? And so, you know, sometimes you just want to be done to, and sometimes you want to be done with, right? And so, you know, if you're doing a feedback loop, 
sort of dynamic where you're you're feeling into the energy of the room and you're adjusting based on how the energy shifts and moves then you know part of that is learning how to read the energy of the room and learning how to you know okay you know knowing enough about your instruments to adjust accordingly when i do sound healing with my voice i do a combination of the two oftentimes because in a live environment um i will have a circle of people around the the healing chair and then i'll have a person in the healing chair so i'll start off doing work for the group i'll move into doing one-on-one -on -one work with the person in the healing chair doing stuff specifically for them but impacting everyone in the room at the same time because the sound impacts everybody there's a reason that group came together there's mm -hmm. a reason that they're there they all share some uh elements of their experience and therefore mm -hmm doing work on one person will impact somebody else who's not being worked on at the time. It happens all the time. And so, you know, I am conscious of the energetic of the group as well as conscious of the energetic person I'm working on. And so, you know, it, it just depends. And I may, in, I may include, um, you know, some energy healing at the same time where I'm just, in, you know, using my hands to clear things, or I may literally do hands-on work on people every now and again, I'll do trigger therapy or something on them in the midst of all of this too. So it just depends on the person who's doing the work as to what they bring to the table. And, and a lot of that's based on your background, right? Every single spiritual healer out there has a different background and therefore they have different tool sets that they bring to the table and different mm -hmm. things that they do. And, you know, mine just happened to be these. And so somebody else would do something equally as useful, but with a completely different tool belt, right? So, okay, you know, these things, you, you know, I want you to realize that, um, you know, just because I have X, Y, and Z skills, it doesn't mean you have to have X, Y, and Z skills to be effective. Right? I was okay. Effective before I had all these skills, and I will be effective when I have more skills than this. And other people are effective using completely different skills, right? So, you know, you it's a variety. Bring, yeah, you'll bring you will be called to the things that are most relevant for you. And you will bring your unique energy signature to those things. So even if you went out and did everything I did and learned all the skills that I learned and had all the experiences that I had, you would still be a different person doing a different thing than me when you got to the end because you started off as a different person. And yeah. that okay. person experienced the exact same set of circumstances differently than I experienced it because you had a different set of belief structures and so on and so forth from the beginning. You had a different energy signature when you started, therefore you have a different energy signature when you finished. Now, would your energy signature become closer to mine because you had all the same experiences? Yes, mm -hmm. it would become closer. But I guarantee we would not have had the same responses to those experiences. And therefore, you know, that would change. Yeah. Them. Right. So, you know, this is why it's so important. And this is one of the things that I talk about. So um, I, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag on this. So you guys have heard me talk about the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School. And I've talked about that. I haven't talked about it in, in depth in a while, but that's what the Woo program is, is the Sacred Power and Purpose of Mystery School. You're stepping into the Mystery School. And, and you know, the people who are taking the Spiritual Coach Certification are learning how to be instructors in the Spiritual, uh, in the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School. And, you know, one of the things that's important to me is that I think it's crucially important to have other people other voices in your spiritual practice experience to not just follow a single path because you know this path is my path and i talk to you guys about my path all the time um but it's by far not the only path okay and i didn't come to this path because it was the right path i came to this path because it is the conglomeration and the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Synthesis, the 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 what coming to clarity. I was gonna say I'm trying to think and I'm There's useless a word today. For it and I can't come up yes. with it. But, but it is that um, coming to clarity of all the different paths that I've done and bringing them culmination. Into culmination. Thank you. Um, Got it. <laughs> and, um, 
and therefore this is what I teach because it's, it's based on all the different things that I've done in the 50 some years or almost 50 years that I've been doing this work. Does it make it the be all end all? Absolutely not. Okay. So one of the things that I'm, I'm actually doing is I'm seeking out other teachers and going to see if I can get them to come and join me in the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School as additional instructors. Yes, I am building Hogwarts. Okay. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, you know, and as my spiritual coach certification people come up and, and crystallize their own path, they will also be invited to be instructors in the system as well. So, you know, we're, we're bringing together a whole bunch of stuff and that's part of what I'm doing here. And, and that's the thing is that I want you to really pay attention to the fact that there are many different pathways to the same thing. And then there are also mm -hmm. many different pathways to many different places. And, you know, there is no one and be all end all of everything. And, you know, if you believe that you need to stop believing that right now, because, because it's all a, a diamond with many, many facets, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the, when we say mine is the only path, what we're saying is I'm, scared and i don't know if that's true and i need it to be true and so therefore i am the only path mm -hmm. that's and that's that's all ego isn't it it is all ego and the, the further you get into this work um the more evolved the people are that you talk to the more they live in shades of gray and mm -hmm. the understanding that everything is a reflection of if not the actuality of everything else and so um, we are living in a complex energetic matrix that is formed by common belief and intent. And how we see things is not how we think it, we see things. Okay. There is, there is, um, what we think of as the simplicity of physical reality is not that. And the empaths out there know that there is a whole nother layer of just simply empath knowledge that exists when you walk into a scenario and you're like, oh, this is not good. And you look at somebody who's not an empath and they're looking at you like, what? And you're like, you don't feel that? <laughs> they're like, yeah, oh, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Um, there's a whole nother layer there. Now, if that's true, imagine how many other layers there are. OK, mm -hmm. this is what I'm saying is that the, the, the what we think of as physical reality is not the simplicity of what we think of as physical reality. It is much more complex and, and sound healing taps into a lot of that complexity. And that's why I love it that, you know, I'm a musician at heart. So, there yeah. is but, um, you know, I know a shaman who you know, well, actually we we interviewed her on the show, uh, Janine Bolin. And mm -hmm. she says when, whenever somebody's depressed, the first thing she asks is, when was the last time you sang and when was the last time you danced? Because those have an impact on our beingness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So how do we wrap this one up? Uh, so, uh, so the first thing is, if you have questions about this, I didn't mention the Facebook group. So there is the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta Facebook group. Please join it. You can ask your questions in there. There are a lot of great people in there, including most of the guests who have been on the show, as well as other listeners. And so there's, I think there's almost 900 people in there now, something like that, uh, 800 and some. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it, it's a great place to come in and ask questions, share experiences, get feedback, share your ideas. If you've got a request for a podcast, this is a perfect place to put it. You could also just email it to me at kelly at kellysparta.com. I love ideas for podcasts. Thank you. That's how this energy series happened, actually, is we had a listener oh, yeah. for it. Um, I don't yep. remember exactly which one right now, but somebody asked for it. So if you go back to the first one in the series, you'll you'll know. And so, you know, that's a great way to get some questions answered. Okay. And then if you're thinking, ooh, the secrets of power and purpose mystery school, I want to be in a mystery school. I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, how do I do it? Right. <laughs> um, the answer is go to the discovery call page on the website at kellysparta.com and click and sign up. And I will personally talk with you about 
where your journey has taken you. We will discuss where you are right now, and I will make a personal uh, suggestion for exactly where to go from here based on what you want to accomplish and where you are in your life. And so that is another way for you to get involved. Now, how do we wrap this episode up? That's what I started asking. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> Sam, but there's so much more to talk about. Yeah. Well, but you know, I got <laughs> I can't help myself. Stop it. I know. It's yeah. a, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. But but one one myth, actually, well, let, let's do it this way, yeah. because I know there's a myth out there because I'm hearing it. Mm. But, Kelly, I can't ever do what I do with, with like you do with my voice because, <clears throat> ready for it? I'm not a good singer. Oh, that has so go ahead and, to do with it. Yeah, go ahead and just kill that myth right there. Well, anybody who's listened to my sound healings knows that they are not always pretty. And even when they are pretty, they don't need to be like amazing pretty. They're, it's not about the, it's not about the singing. It is about the vibration. And so, yeah, it, you don't have to be a great singer, but you do have to not be tone deaf. Because if you're okay. tone deaf, you won't be able to tell when the sound pitch changes. Unless you are really good at reading your own vocal folds and understanding how those are being impacted. So, okay. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say you can't do it if you're tone deaf, but it would be very difficult to do it if you're tone deaf. Okay. But I don't have to be, you know, Whitney Houston or Beyonce oh, or, and all them. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Many people how to do sound healing who did not have like amazing voices. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, we're so that so that is your myth buster for the day. Myth buster Kip. for the day. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, as we think about this, I'm also just going to say I have decided that there is going to be a retreat next year, and it is going to happen. You know, in the last quarter of the year, so September to November, somewhere in there. I've still got to work it out with the venue, but I have found a venue. And Yay! I'm about that. And the, we're going to, I'm going to teach you my form of magic. That's what we're going to do at this retreat. So, uh, and it's going to be in Panama. It'll be in Panama. In Panama. Okay. Yeah. And seven days, six nights, I think. I'm still working that out with the, with the staff, but, um, and, uh, you know, what I will teach will be dependent upon who signs up. So everybody who comes in is going to fill out a form to tell me what their background is, what their knowledge base is so that I know how to focus the work, but, uh, we will definitely be doing things. Uh, I'll definitely be doing Kundalini awakenings for everyone at the nice uh, event. Uh, and we are definitely going to be doing some presence work. We're definitely going to be doing some bilocation work. We're going to definitely be doing some working together in a group stuff. Um, and then, you know, what, where we go from there will be dependent upon what people what people's background is and, and experience level. And then I'll, I'll pick something based on the energetics of the group and we'll go from there. But yeah. Okay. And then there will be empty space in the, the time of the retreat. So if there's something that isn't being covered by the event, you'll have some time to sit down and talk with me about it and we can have that conversation too. So if there's something specific that you wanted to learn, then, you know, I might, I, I have been known to rewrite parts of my retreat in progress at times. So like, oh, we're here. That's not where I expected we were going to be when I was planning this thing for tomorrow. Let's do something different. I'll do this instead. You know, that's how how it rolls with me because I'm well, always in feedback loop with my, my yes attendees. So, yeah. So anyway, we are wandering all over the field here. So. Uh, so the sound healing wrap up for the day, the Kellyism. Let's see. What are we going to do? We're going to say. Vibration creates reality. Choose what you vibrate with wisely. There you go. All right. Well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye.